We're here in the mothership, and which is always a totally different experience than having you come to a city somewhere for yeah. a quick weekend. Um, because of the community that you have created here in your studio, but there's a lot of people who come here from all over the world, across the country, for short time, for long. some people who move here, mm -hmm. or who spend months studying here. So, can you speak to what is it about your program, your certification program, that they are coming here for? Well, first I think that, that um, the fact that my certification program right now is the only program that's just based on, not just, but based on technique and not stylization. So the other programs that are available right now um, are all stylization. So if you want to, you know, look like that person or imitate or emulate, um, that's what their program's about. For me, it was really important that my certification program stayed at a really, really deep-rooted technical level. So no matter what stylization you choose to do later, you're all getting trained, right, the same base level. So I am so proud that, um, you know, most of my dancers, they actually do go out and explore different stylizations and they're not bound by one, but I think people feel that and see it and they go, oh, I can be really well trained and have this strong technique base and actually figure out maybe what they want to say as artists. And I think it inspires people to move here because um, the amount of uh, time and energy that you put in is going to have, of course, faster results. And um, you can do this program overseas. Many people do, and they're at high levels. Um, but I, my, it will be more intensive, of course, if you move here near me. So if somebody wants this dance form and this art form to be their priority, then it totally makes sense that they would move right next to where they want their focus to be in the school. Because this is really a school. So this is not like regular classes. This is this is a bit of a different situation, here right? Because there is a program. It's a vision. program. It's a school, and it's not just it's not just a program. It's the actually two full programs: the Jamila Salampur format and the Zuhaila Salampur format. And the Jamila Salampur format is a stylization. It's a very specific stylization. And the Zuhaila format and certification program is not. So okay, I'm running two full programs, and, so, and they're actually, and both formats are the foundation of what a lot of stylization is right now. So right. why not come and study at the root source? Yeah. So people are moving. I get it. I would. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's Northern California. Like, how horrible right. could it be? <laughs> okay. And, and I want to come back to that, just that beginning and the concept and the where the Jamila format started and mm -hmm. what it came out of, but for the moment, your your program, um, the level system, so you've got levels one mm -hmm. through five, and people work really hard and certify to have to test, and mm -hmm. maybe they pass, maybe they don't, and receive their certification. Yeah. It's a very long process. Um, can you can you talk about the content yeah. of some of the levels? Um, level one is probably, I think, one of the hardest because it's um, very mental. So you come in and you're having to learn not just, of course, the names of the muscles and memorize like what muscles you use to execute the movements, but also you're learning your body and you're learning your body, your weaknesses, your strengths, how to actually balance them out. Um, but it's a very, um, I think, vulnerable level, especially if you have any other belly dance training before hand because there's this there's this constant like um, backloading of your body almost like fighting to do what it's used to doing and then I'm actually asking for you to do it a whole different way and it's all it could be the same movement but with different intent and different mental right focus and process so uh, I think level one is very difficult because it's very mental so you're having to actually intellectually and intelligently understand what you're doing and then once we get out of that, and of course it's solid, it's a full level, um, once you get of that and you go to level two, um, there's the physical stamina, right? So you have to be 
You have to have the mind power to be able to drive the body power. In level two, and that is really where it's like a <laughs> triathlon. You are strong, you're working full time, and I have to make sure the whole point of level two is actually that you're not having to actually think about, wait, where's my right foot, and you know, step on it. That there's this like command system that's like inside you, and it's really working on muscle memory. Um, and you kind of never finish level two. Because level two, you never, I mean, I have people that are level four certified that are still coming to level two week longs because they want that drill. They want that, you know, yeah. that exercise, really. And then um, in level three, you, you're combining. Now you're combining, you know, mind, body, spirit. And that's where we learn emotional preparation and musical development and how to choreograph and also layering. So now you're developing even like your skill. And um, you also start going into like concepts of the costume, even having a representation of you in the music. And so we actually develop costuming, and, you know, it being a part of the expression within the music and um, you begin your theatrical training in level two. That's where I kind of uh, gently guide my dancers into like understanding the need for that specific artistic training, you know. And then in level three, we really develop their theatrical training and ability because it's so important that um, they're able to use tools that are, that are, you know, developed in theater training for their emotional development to be able to express the music. So we bring in a theater coach and then of course I handle a little bit of the, the Sandy Meisner uh, work that I was lucky enough to be able to experience. And so I actually changed exercises I did with Meisner and I made them um, for dancers, right? And then in, and also in level three, you learn basic, you know, fundamental skills of how to choreograph. And then in level four, level four is um, you know pulling it all together. So you're working at this level where you're not just exploring; you're actually integrating, right? So it's the practice of really, you know, putting it all to use. Mm -hmm. And in level four, you actually have to choreograph one of your pieces. And the level four test is actually your show. So it's it's your you know graduation show, and. <laughs> It's in three parts. So the first part are a set of my choreographies that you have to learn and go through that are really difficult. Mm -hmm. And then the second part is um, your chore your personal choreography that we've actually been working on and developing together. But you know, you guide me, and then I sculpt you. Mm -hmm. um, and that is uh, also you, you. You're given every year. It's different ten steps that you have to integrate into the choreography, and they're all different based on the musical genre because every year we change. The musical genre, right? So it's like classical or Mozart, and then um, Billy Holiday, or you know Miles Davis, or we change. So I want the, and that's really what the fusion section is, right? So that's what I would consider fusion, because you're taking genres of music that aren't necessarily associated with this art form, but you're using your dance vocabulary, right, to express yourself to music, um, honestly, without being a cliche. And this has to be an honest, right, expression of true fusion. And then the, um, and you have to design your own costume and everything that actually, you know, fits with the piece, wow. right? Yeah. And then the third section is uh, you're working with a live Arabic band that I bring in, and you've been um, throughout the years working on your understanding and appreciation for Arabic music, and that's why I have the list on the website. I was like, yeah, start there, you know. With <laughs> 3,000 songs I, know. I, was like, I was like, I just want to make a small list, and now it's like 130 songs. Yeah. <laughs> but at least you start somewhere, you know, and you're like learning these songs and then learning the different renditions. So then when you, when you actually get into my level three workshop, I actually hire a band to come in and you do a show. You get to start dancing to live Arabic music. And it's, of course, op, you know, optional, not really optional. You know, me with optional, it's like not optional, but it's optional. But then in level four, you're, you're in it because I bring in the band again and you're out, you're out there performing. Um, and I realized I had to hire a band and bring in an Arabic band because uh, there are no opportunities. I, you know, there are no nightclubs anymore. There are no you know, Arabic bands, you know, that are really working with a large body of Arabic music. 
And there are bands that actually are doing a wonderful job, but they have a very limited uh, knowledge of Arabic music. Very small. Very small. You know, because it's not what they're focusing on, or they're trying to do a broad, you know, Armenian, Greek, and Turkish, and yeah. Arabic, you know. Yeah. So we're focusing on the Arabic. And then um, you don't know what you're going to get, and you never know what you're going to get. So that's the point, is that research your music. And even if you don't know a song, if you research the music, you start to hear patterns and understand sentiment and tonal qualities and instrumentation, orchestration, and oh, that's a nude, oh, that's a canoe, oh, that. And so you start to pick up, and then your instincts, right, are being developed, mm -hmm. your improvisational work. And of course, that's why now um, there's the Jamila Salampour certification requirements within the Suhela and vice versa, because the Jamila Salampour stylization is so important and brilliant for improvisational work, <laughs> right? So uh, you don't know what you're going to play, the music starts and I push you out on stage. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> For, you know, metaphorically speaking. <laughs> yeah. And it's great because that's what, you know, that's what you got to do. you got to just get out there. So and you're so. really developing a very complete person, right. dancer, artist. Yes. And, and then level is... five is the teaching certificate, of okay. course. And level five, uh, you work one-on-one -on -one with me and you're under my wing and I really, you know, we work on teaching you how to teach. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and I, I really like that your program is has such an emphasis on the development of uh, ourselves as artists. Can you tell me a bit about your influences as you as you grew up, um, as far as your heroes or the people who were really able to um, mm -hmm. influence your dance and your art? Right. Well, you know, I it's it's really interesting because now I'm starting to blog about it. I'm starting to think about it, and I never really um, I never really understood that it would be. Um, so profound. Um, <laughs> like, I was just there. I was just in Oakland or at Fisherman's Wharf in the late 70s. And I was there. So it was this time, this moment in time where, wow, electric boogaloo and the popping and locking and break dancing. I mean, it was, and basically the isolations, right, of what was happening within, like, urban. Right. Street dance. We're being so, we're, we're influencing greatly, not just the dance world, but it was that generation. Right. So, you know, like my daughter, she doesn't know life before that. Right. Because well, <laughs> she popping and locking is really common. Right? Yeah. But now she takes a regular old jazz class, and I'm like, oh, girl, that's so electric boogaloo, 1978. Like, you know, okay. and she's like, nah, -uh. and I'm like, uh huh, because <laughs> mom was there, and for her, it's just normal. Even her modern dance class, I'm like, wow. Even in the modern dance classes, really, and but that's kind of awesome because it's like, really, like seeping into the dance world like so greatly. But there I was, like a young teenager, and um, so that movement form was a part of my generation and my culture, and so. You almost, uh, you you were not not influenced by it, but because I was also a dancer, and then I was also figuring out who I was and how I wanted to express the music that I loved, the Arabic music that I loved, I was integrating that type of um, physicality, but always, always to the music. But it became a unique way of moving. I mean, nobody was really... <laughs> Doing any kind of isolation, there was no square. <laughs> now everybody's doing it, hip square, and there was no squares. There was no, you know, layering really. I mean, I think I, I remember seeing that yoga mom do um, glutes with like you know some rib cage locks, but they weren't really rib cage locks. At one point, I was like, that's fantastic, and that was from the late seventies as well. And I was like, well, then if you can do that, then you can do a. <sighs> You know, right, yeah. <laughs> so it was really, but yeah, no, no. I mean, now what you see and you know, the belly dance world is uh, quite, quite, you know, an evolution of, um, you know, right. It, things are being fused, um, yeah. but I guess, and that maybe brings me back to Jamila and what mm -hmm. she contributed when she was doing her mm -hmm. work in. Well, and what's really, really. Uh, important to remember about my mom and her work is that my mom is in love with the culture mm -hmm. completely. 
So she's, her motivation is all because she loves the culture, right? Um, and so my mom was always very respectful. So she actually didn't feel, and this is what's so funny, my mom didn't feel that she actually was creating anything of her own. What she felt that she was documenting. So when she worked with Maya Medwar and she saw Maya doing figure eights up to down, she documented that movement and called it Maya and then tried to break it down and pass it on, right? And the Arabic family, she watched, right? Mm -hmm. Like the house parties and what Arab women were doing at that time and were documenting. The Egyptian family is based on more of the show, right? The professional belly dancer, that's the Egyptian family. She was documenting what were movements that were common and popular at that time. Putting them into families, right? Documenting, putting them in the families, and then breaking down to the best of her knowledge, which for that time was brilliant. I mean, brilliant, right? right. To say, use the word pivot, use the word shimmy, use the word three quarters. I mean, nobody was doing that. It's Jimmy LaSalampour, you know. So that was her language that yes. she put on what she was observing. That's right. And now everybody called the three quarter shimmy, and that's a Jimmy LaSalampour step. Mm -hmm that she documented by watching, right? So she, my mom goes, I didn't invent it. And I'm like, but she kind of did. <laughs> and then she put this, she put the name on it, three quarters of me, you know. Yeah. And so, taught a generation of dancers. And taught a generation of dancers, not just a three quarter, but wow, like what, like, you know, came after that. And even within that, then of course, I took the three quarter and did it on an upbeat, and have it a downbeat, and then have it on walking a different time and thing and stuff, and, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. But in taking it back, the dancers that she was documenting, that she was watching and documenting, these were dancers who were coming here from the Middle from East. From the Middle East, exactly. Right. And also they were from the movies that she was watching in that era. So she was, you know, of course, she was, she was doing her research in the 40s. <laughs> so what was in the 40s, right? Tehiyah Karyoka Samia Gamal, Nadia Masabni, Naima Akif, these women. And where did her finger symbols come from? Where did her finger symbols come from? Okay, well, I'm just going to tell you that I really think my mom secretly is really a jazz musician. Because my mom's musicality is so instinctual and so deep that it that's really where my mom completely is brilliant. And... My mom told me that she, you know, asked her father when she was really young if he would get her music lessons. She wanted to study piano. And um, it was impossible at that time, in that era, right, in her time of life. But I really feel my mom is a musician. And it makes sense because the way she plays cymbals, and no one's ever, ever created a system like my mother, ever. Um, and the way she syncopates and the way she grooves and riffs and jams, like, that's what she wants to do all day. <laughs> yeah. And there's that clip, you know, of us dancing at Ricasa. And we were not really dancing. We're just, like, hanging out on stage, riffing. And that's how I grew up. Like, we would hang out on the couch and we like, huh. riff. Beautiful. Yeah. But my mom's fingers are a brilliant. So is this why you have kept the finger symbols as a really yes. important aspect of your program? Oh, God, yeah. I've kept the finger symbols as such a strong part of the Jamila and Suhila program because it should be. I mean, I think if a flamenco dancer lost castanets, it would be like, what a shame. And not just like, okay, we'll play a little bit of castanets to show we can, but no, why don't, you know, develop it, like really develop it. And it should evolve. Like if we shouldn't be playing finger symbols like we did 30 years ago or 20 years ago, like, it, you know, yeah. needs to get stronger. Yeah, and so what happened with them? What happened to them, I should ask, because they're not done very much. <sighs> I know. The decline of the symbol. Well, what happened, I believe, is that in the late 70s when the music changed, and it wasn't really that it changed, it, it developed, it evolved, and now we had these big bands, right? So you had these 30-piece bands playing for these dancers in Egypt and composing these pieces. Um, it had never been done before. It was like, you know, I think um, in these big stages, like it was really the beginning of the belly dance superstar, right? Being a superstar as a belly dancer was, you know, other than Tia Karaoke and Samia Gamal, where they were... Um, they never had the kind of audiences that like Nadia Nagel Fouad had, right? Mm -hmm. These big, these big, and um, they had big bands. And I think that the dancers took their cymbals off and just hired a cymbal player to like learn the composition and be in the band. Because also, instead of you know 
the little number it was a huge production and costume changes and like like you know this this huge grandness so they just they just hired a some player to come in the dancer was like yeah then you do it yeah. Hey, yeah. Uh, have a thirty-piece band. Yeah, you do it. And then also, like you know, it freed I think the dancers up to have like more complicated arm work. But I'm like, why can't you do both? Yeah. So. Yeah. Which is... And you know, if I see a dancer without symbols, like it's okay, but not because she can't play. It should be because she chose to not play symbols at the song, and there's a reason. Mm -hmm. On Sunday night when I perform, I don't know if I'm going to play symbols or not. And if I am, I don't know what song. Because it really depends on the energy and the climate of the band. And if they're going to sing, like, you know, you don't play symbols where there's a singer singing. You know, and if you're dancing to live music, you've got to be respectful because a singer could start any minute. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Right? Yeah. But yeah, but we got to keep the symbols going. So oh, yeah. We're alive and well in the sound poor house. That's a big part of what makes this program so challenging. I know. Yeah, and yeah. exciting because if it were easy, then why bother? Right? Right. The program would not be as valuable if it were easy to accomplish. I agree. I, I agree, and I think that the program is really valuable. Uh, but there's one thing that I want to say is that not everybody has to go through the level four performance track. So we do have. There are some people that um, don't want to perform either uh, injuries or or a specific point in their life or religious, right? Mm -hmm. Like beliefs that they actually would just like to stay more private and there is a different path we have for those students that like want to take the non-performer track okay yeah and they go through level four and level five at the same time actually um, but it's way more complicated <laughs> yeah it's way more complicated but it can't be done yeah okay. and it's at um, my discretion so, because I will know if they just are afraid to perform, and then I won't allow them to go that route. I'll make them do the performer route, you know. Right. I've already had a couple of students try that one out, and I'm like, no, 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 no. So we discuss it, you know. Yeah. You really have to get under your under the skin and in the brains of your dancers, and I psyche. think you have to understand their psyche. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's also what defines this program, as opposed to taking classes. And you spoke about this the first day of the workshop, is the difference between having a teacher and having a mentor. Right. Can you speak to that? Totally bit? different. Well, having a teacher, you just come in and you take your class and then you leave. But having a mentor, right, and that class that you take will be very, which should be very valuable and you should be safe and you should learn the move of the week or whatever it is. But a mentor is somebody different because a mentor is somebody that actually takes you under their wing and develops you, um, in this, in this big, big, full spiritual way that's this path based on what you want. And it, cha it could change, too. It's this connection that you share. Um, and you have to be there and available like as, a, as an outlet for the student for whatever comes up and the needs. Like You can't call your teacher and ask advice necessarily, and, and you're going to get the kind of advice that you would do your mentor. Right. You know? So your mentor is really invested in you way beyond that hour that you take a class. Right. When I teach my classes, I am there. I am there and I'm committed for that 90 minutes and then the 90 minutes is over. But when I mentor somebody, I am available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Right. And I think my students feel that. That's a huge commitment. It's a fine. huge commitment. But that's why it's a hard program and also level 5 is one on one with me. That's part for both of us. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, right? I know. Like, what was I thinking? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm putting out some great, great dancers, and I'll tell you, I'm really proud and I think that um, that's, a, that's a testament to the program. Yeah. I really don't have to say much. I just go, look at that. <laughs> it's true. And I have to say that that was my experience watching the show last summer. I was fortunate oh, yeah. enough to come here and see um, the level threes, fours, and fives performing yeah. and to see the evolution of the dance and the progression. Um, it, it, yeah, to see the format on different people's bodies and different people's emotional life. Mm -hmm. It was quite something. And everybody was totally different from each other. Right. But still, they were all like dancing to every music. But they were all such individuals, and I think that that's really important because I don't, uh, 
now there's so many labels. There's all these labels of stylizations, and I look at all of them, and all of them are very cliched. I mean, I travel a lot, and I see a lot, and I'm like, oh, there's that one, and there's that one, and you can label. But what I really want to do by producing those the shows that, like we did with the, the different level dancers within the program is is show that like you you really just have to this base level be able to belly dance. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so I, I want to ask about the different things that are going on. I, I feel like there's a bit of a fragmentation of the community in terms of the music, the stylization mm -hmm. that people are choosing to do and, and the dance is both evolving but also kind of breaking into... So the people are moving too fast. Those students are moving too fast. They're not, they're not enjoying the journey, and they're not taking time to learn. So, so landing in a category before they yeah. really know. People are studying are. stylization before they have any technique, and they think that they're studying technique of the stylization, but it's not. It's still just learning the gag. Right. So they're not taking time. You need to take your time in an art form, and actually, you need to learn your classics, like in any you know other rich art form. You've got to learn your classics. You've got to eat your vegetables. You cannot go to the dessert. You know, and you might not want to eat the dessert after you're full on good food. Like you just, you know what I'm saying? Like you, everybody's just starting like, and I think everybody's really drawn to this, um, to imagery, right? So we look, oh, that's cool. Oh, that sounds cool. Oh, the look is cool, right? So then when you get inside what's happening is the substance really holding the person and not usually. And also where has that um, style, I guess, developed from mm -hmm. um, and learning your history? Because mm -hmm. I have, I can only speak for myself, is that I feel that whenever I come here, I learn a little bit more about the history of belly dance in general and specifically the development of it um, in the last 50 to 100 years or so because there's there has been, with global, globalization, such, um, I mm -hmm. guess, intermixing of people from different countries, like, you know, mm -hmm. ballet is the same thing, while right. the countries Modern have it. Yeah. yeah, and now, it's all influencing each other, so it's an education to me to come here to hear you speak about your mother and her influence, and yeah. to go from there was no belly dance here to there was a huge explosion, mm -hmm. you know, it's quite... It's quite fascinating. I don't yeah. think it's all as well known as it could be. Well, no, I, I think it's really important that people understand the Salonpour family. Um, I'm just appreciating in my life how all of the dots are connecting and mm -hmm. coming into this mm -hmm. place of, oh, I learned these things before that maybe I thought were dead ends for this purpose. And I'm mm -hmm. starting to see in your dance and your art that you perhaps have the same going on, and I wonder if you can speak to that, just the um, different areas of artistic involvement you've had or influence that you've had over the years. Yes, it's all my, like, you know, when I was studying with Sandy Meisner, I never thought I would be running a certification program sitting in the corner of the room making people do repetitions. Right. <laughs> you know, when I was, when I was, I really was like thrust into, I mean, this was my journey. You know, I was having trouble breathing. I was having trouble, I felt, maximizing my movement. And so um, I thought that learning how to breathe and having breath control would be crucial. And I, of course, you know, over two decades of yoga, but it wasn't enough. It wasn't right. I needed that, especially because when you dance and you perform and when you teach, it's a totally different breathing process. So I was lucky enough to end up at Seth Riggs, like, you know, vocal coach. And then, of course, he um, had me work with one of his apprentices, uh, Roger Love, who ended up going and um, producing his own format. But I was, you know, I'm in the school where, like, the Jackson family's getting trained, and at that point with Linda Carlisle and Madonna, everybody was going to the school. And I just, like, I just wanted the best singing school, <laughs> and I ended up there. And so I learned how to breathe and really maximize, like, my power and the energy and, like, tonal quality and to make an impact when I taught my students, right? Mm -hmm. So, of course, that's part of level five. Gotta go take your singing lessons. You know, we deal with breath control, right? You have to. And then, who would have thought? Then who would have thought I would have met Walter Freeman, you know? 
Yeah. Who would have thought? You know, I just stumbled. My path was revealed to me, but I was just living my life. Right. And then I was pulling it in for me, and I was absorbing it. Right. But it, it, it happened to me. I didn't go out to search for it. Yeah, and that's what you said last time about your program and your format. It happened to you. It came to you. Right. Yeah. And that's important. And I think that uh, um, there's a wave of dancers um, that are creating a format for different reasons and a program for different reasons because they want to um, duplicate their brand. Which is different. I'm not um, teaching people how to dance like me okay. and have the look and feel and here buy this top and here's the bindi and do the thing and here the here's the look and feel. Right. And here's the move and the thing and the stuff. No. No, and that is what I've yeah. noticed is very different about your dancers is that they all come out well, when I've seen them perform, they're all completely different. Completely and different, very individual and they have their own character and personality and they don't look like me. Well, let's talk about you. <laughs> uh, uh, how, are you, how do you feel going into your first level three? You seem a little nervous. Uh, well, yeah. You're I like vibrating. I can't like, imagine. You're vibrating like there's energetic nervous vibration under your skin. I think that's a lifelong vibration of energy or maybe I Why? hit my thirties. Um, I, it's hard for me to explain. I think because the level of dance here is so high because you're my mentor because the expectation is so high, not in terms of, I have like this, you know, there, no, there's no negativity behind it, it's all inside me, it's all of this, right, right. okay, so the level of dance here in your studio is up here, I perform all the time, I have danced for 10 years in restaurants and Arabic nightclubs for Arabs for like 10 years, like Friday, Saturday nights, four shows a night, and I am terrified <laughs> to dance my, with the Arabic band uh, right, right. here in the studio in front of you. I can't even believe I'm saying this right now. In front of you and Andrea and uh, that, there's. Oh, my mom will be here too. Don't forget, you know. But just I just want to let you know. So get ready for it, baby. I just feel like. <laughs> I mean, thinking about it, I'm turning white. <laughs> I'm shaking. Yeah, because. I, yeah, I just need to learn how to always, some of the battles I'm fighting right now, fear and anxiety and everything and all aspects of my life, is something I need to overcome. So the reason I signed up for that, because I got the email and I was like, mm -mm, there's no way I'm going to do that. And I got the second email like two months later and I thought to myself, what a hypocrite would I be if I didn't do it because I was afraid, because mm -hmm. I'm always telling my right. students and other people, go where the fear is. Right. So yeah, that's going to be like the big, a big hurdle for me, because no, it just is. The whole thing is such, um, there's a lot of bugs to work out in here. That I'm anxious to get out. Well, and it's combining your your training, right? So it's like all your years of theatrical training, and then now you're going to combine it with like your dance training, and now so now you're not separating, basically who you are. So you can't hide behind the dancer, Christy. Yeah. You can't hide behind the actress, Christy. You actually have to be Christy, which is totally yeah. different than actually hiding behind the titles of the two different arts, right? That yeah. you integrate and emulate, it's actually combined, which is so important for you because you have to be you. Mm -hmm. Hence creating you, the dancer, so when you go out on stage, there's that organic, real honest moment that you have to be yes. fearless enough to share. Yeah, the honesty and the yeah. nakedness, I think, yeah. of it is. And you know, then the problem, I think the biggest issue is, of course, we've had level one and two to to share together in our journey, and I know you. <laughs> <laughs> level three is like, <sighs> yeah. We're we're opening up the. But boxes I need that, and I'm excited be. for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's great. You're overdue for level three. I know you were resisting. <laughs> I, it's true, you were resisting for the last year. I had the resistance. I am. Yeah. So did I. I was nudgy too. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad. I'm so glad you're doing it. And we should actually interview you again afterwards. <laughs> I'd love to see how you're feeling. Yeah, I'm not yeah, it's true. But um, what I do appreciate about this, I have to say this because I've been brewing on this the last few days, mm -hmm. I appreciate so much about the program because when I had 
started here, I was teaching already, and of course it was too soon, as it is with everybody mm -hmm. who teaches. Um, but I was really trying to figure out how to teach. This, even though I couldn't do anything when I came here, I could do nothing. It was horrible and humiliating and trauma. <laughs> Sorry, trauma. that's terrible. It that's was like... terrible. But I completely got the vision. I got mm -hmm. it. And I was like, mm -hmm. that is what I have been trying to figure out. It has made my life so much easier. It has taken all of the complication and the confusion away, and it's it'll go well, forever. Because you're benefiting from my journey. Like I've created this program. Like you don't have to go through any of the trials and errors that I had to go through. I was my own guinea pig. It's like I'm like, all right, here it is. Here's what's working. All you, but see, here's the hard part. Now you have to do it. Like yeah. here it is. But that's the hard part. You know. Yeah.